All right, Kristen Fisher reporting live. Kristen, thank you. So let's bring in our political panel for a very fair and balanced debate. David Avella is the GOPAC chairman and radio host. Host Mark Levine also joins us. Thank you, gentlemen. I had to get that out there because I'm trying to think of all the topics that we have to sort through <laughs> in a, limit, a limited amount of time. There are a lot. Uh, there are a lot. So, David, I want to start with you. We just heard a bit of Carly Fiorina on Fox News Sunday, of course, condemning the attacks on a Planned Parenthood facility. But she also hit hard on liberal critics, um, saying, you know, who say anti-abortion rhetoric could have contributed to the shooting. So. Uh, what do Republican candidates at this point need to be doing? What does their conversation need to be in reaction to these type of horrific events? Sure. Uh, Carly Fiorina hit it right on the, on the head, which is you have to state your pro-life views. Uh, very important to Republican primary voters. We are the party of uh, pro-life voters, uh, by and large. And two, um, look, what the Democrats say is exactly what they're trying to do to score political points. It has no basis with reality. The, this deranged gentleman who went to Colorado and did a horrific thing did so because he's deranged, not because he's pro-life, per se. What do you think, Mark? I think he's a terrorist. I think anytime you kill someone for a political cause, you're a terrorist. And he killed someone because he is he's pro-life. Now, what, whatever your views are on abortion, we all have to condemn a terrorist attack, but we should call it for what it is. It is a terrorist attack to attack and kill anyone for political reasons. Okay, now we have, like I said, a lot of topics, so I want to move on. We, we also heard in her piece uh, Ben Carson traveling to Jordan to, to visit the Syrian refugees. Um, this was a, a big move. We haven't seen other candidates do it. And, uh, David, do you think this was productive? Do you think this will bolster his, his, his status and, and foreign policy, him, him being familiar with foreign policy? What does it do for his campaign? Uh, smart tactic on his part. Uh, uh, he's been criticized by some for making a few misstatements or missteps on foreign policy. So to go over there, uh, the conversation right now is all about the refugees. We heard some of his comments being spot on, which is Syrians ultimately want to be in Syria. Uh, those who want, uh, who don't want to do harm to the U.S. and use this as an outlet to get here. Um, he's trying to make sure he think? stays in the conversation. Do some of them want to be in the U.S.? Uh, of course. Well, of course they want to be in the U.S. Right now, one third of Syrians are refugees, and there's been 300 thousand dead and uh, the conflict continues. I, I think Ben Carson has been criticized not just by some but by some on his own team for not knowing anything about the Middle East so I guess it's a smart thing. I hope it gives him a little bit of compassion to see how much incredible suffering the Syrians have undergone. But do you think, do you think other candidates are going to follow suit? Do you think that we're going to be seeing more candidates go overseas now? This election is not going to be decided about how many people go overseas. <laughs> this election is going to be about who has the right answers for solving these problems. And, and going to Syria uh, it was a smart move, but it doesn't mean uh, Ben Carson is going to get the nomination it's, just because he went to Syria. It's smart because he's so weak. Uh, ben Carson is fading and will fade fast, in my humble opinion. You think he's going to continue to fade? Uh, to, be, to be determined. I mean, uh, we, we're two weeks, two months away from votes actually starting to get counted and pre-game is fun but until votes actually start getting counted we're not going to know who the nominee is going to be. Okay we don't have much more time left but I do have one more person that I want to talk about. This may surprise you. It's Donald Trump. Uh, he was on NBC. I've heard, I've heard he, uh, he doubled down today on NBC when he uh, said that he does recall seeing on TV New Jersey residents celebrating after 9-11. There is nothing that is holding him back. There's is nothing on TV that shows that. Uh, there were there were a few people in Gaza that celebrated. There were no Americans uh, celebrating that anyone has on video camera, if so they would have found it by now. This is Donald Trump's way. He sort of doubles down on what he thinks people want him to say, on what it wants to be true. I, I have a feeling he's going to fade as well. The Republican establishment supports Marco Rubio. The Republican establishment usually gets its way. They have super delegates designed to let them get their way. So Trump and Carson will make a big deal right now. Come January, February, they'll be gone. Mark, Last Mark's word. not right. We don't have super delegates in the Republican primary sure election process. We don't. The Democrats have super delegates, not Republicans. You can call them whatever you want, but they're uh, more than one in six the, the of, of the people at the convention. Uh, the people who cast the votes are voters in their states who then send their delegates. We don't do super delegates. Democrats need to do that to protect Hillary Clinton, to keep Ben uh, There's to Republican keep ben National Carson, Committee people or, that are I'm there. I'm sorry, not Ben Carson, to keep uh, Bernie Sanders from taking the nomination away from her, as they needed to do a couple years ago or tried to do with superdelegates to make sure Barack Obama didn't beat her. But 
he actually did. Uh, I'm talking uh, about the unelected people that aren't chosen by primary. Uh, they, they don't get they don't yeah. get votes, Mark. Sure uh, unelected do. people at the convention don't get to decide who the nominee is. Uh, it's it, it's <laughs> that's laughable <laughs> for you to say that. Um, but as far as Mr. Trump, look, right. Do Donald Trump is Donald Trump. Um, he's going to do more interviews than anybody else in this election cycle, and it doesn't matter what he says. He has a core group of supporters who aren't going to leave him. The question for Donald Trump is. Can he expand that, that as Marco Rubio and as Ted Cruz continue to see uh, upward mobility in what they're doing, can he expand his base to make sure he gets more votes than they do and he has enough actual delegates to cast votes for him <laughs> I, I, at the convention? I think the establishment will get their way. It'll be Rubio. David and Mark, thank you so much. I appreciate it. We'll continue this lively debate for another Saturday or Sunday. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you, Liz. And coming up, be sure to tune in to Fox News Sunday right after our show. You can hear Chris Wallace's exclusive interview with Carly Fiorina. Watch it right here at 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. Eastern. And coming up, they're at the top of a lot.